Hi, I want to talk to you guys about um, accuracy and precision today. And we're going to do this with a little uh, look at some of the um, glassware that we use in chemistry. And in chemistry we use beakers, and beakers come in different sizes. They come much bigger than this, and also they uh, come about this size. This is a 50 milliliter beaker. Uh, then we also have graduated cylinders that come in different sizes as well. This is a 100 milliliter beaker, this is a 25, and this is a 10 milliliter beaker, or I mean graduated cylinder. So all these graduated cylinders and beakers are used to measure the volume of fluids and sometimes even uh, some chemicals if we're using powders and things like that. But generally we use uh, glassware like this to measure solutions, uh, dissolved substances, um, and reagents and products that we use within chemistry. I want to talk to you a little bit about precision and accuracy. Accuracy simply says that uh, you are accurate within a certain uh, value or, or, or substance that you might be using. And so precision is, is how in line is that with what we are trying to get. And so what I want to really explain to you is that, like in this beaker, this beaker, the first line starts at 10 milliliters, and it goes all the way up to 40. And so as long as we hit one of those lines, we're pretty accurate. Uh, and somewhat precise. But what we know sometimes is that depending on how large the volume of the, of the container is will also create discrepancies or differences in what you're really trying to measure. If we look, the lines actually go from 10 to 20 here. So between the 10 and 20 mark we have basically uh, 9 milliliters that really don't have a mark to account for. So if we fall between those lines with a fluid or something that we are trying to figure out, then we are left to guess. And guessing, of course, is not good in science because we want to make sure we are accurate as well as precise in what we do. So, for example, if I were to put this water, this is just water with some uh, food coloring to make it show up a little bit better. If I go ahead and put this amount within the beaker, we notice that the volume of liquid falls between, between the 10 and the 20 milliliter mark. And so we are left to guess what that might be. Now if it's halfway in between, you could say, well, that's about 15. But if you notice my language, I said it's about 15. I'm not positive that it's 15. If I want to be more precise with my measurement, I need to use uh, something that has more lines that gives me a more accurate reading. And so if you notice this, uh, be, or this graduated cylinder, actually will measure up to 25 and if you notice it has lines bef before 5 ever comes into play. So we actually have a more precise measurement because we have more lines. If we go to a smaller graduated cylinder, if you notice it is accurate below or actually at 1 milliliter and I actually have a volume of liquid in here so I want to pour that out for just a second. And so I can actually be accurate up to 1 milliliter and it goes to 2 the next one. So between the 1 and 2 we have some marks too and they go up by 0.2. So 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8 and 2 milliliters. And so this is accurate to at least 1 milliliter and then past 1 milliliter it is accurate to a 0.2 milliliter volume. So if you notice this one was over 10, this one only registers up to 10. So if I want to measure more precisely what this volume of liquid is, this one won't do it for me because my volume obviously exceeds 10 milliliters. So I'll be past the mark. So I'm going to go to this one here. If you notice it goes up to 25. And so I'm going to go ahead and pour what liquid is in this particular um, beaker into this graduate. And so I want to try to get it all in there. Of course you sometimes get you know, a little bit that's going to um, drip down the sides and stuff, so we want to kind of get down what we can. And if I notice, remember we were saying it was about 15, well look at this. This one right here actually registers above the 15 mark. Now in a graduated cylinder what happens is we have air pressure inside that pushes down as the, the glass uh, column wants to actually adhere to the liquid that's inside. So we end up with this little curve that ends up inside as the pressure is pulling down inside of the, of the um, liquid and then we have the edges of it that actually want to stay connected to the side. So we call that little curve a meniscus. And so we always want to read at the bottom of the meniscus when we read a graduated cylinder. And so when I look at this, I want to make sure it's on a flat surface and I'm going to look and if you notice 
it may be hard to tell on the camera, but the meniscus actually falls to one small line above the 15. So I've got to figure out what that line represents, okay? So I've got to figure out what it counts up to evenly. So it goes from 15 to 20, and then I have all these marks in between. So let me count those. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then it hits 20. So every single little mark here, because it's going from 15 to 20, must represent a single milliliter. So it goes 15, 16, 17, oh, I'm sorry, let me, let me back up on that. If we had uh, half of those marks, it would be representing uh, one of those. So it's going 15, a mark, a mark, a mark, a mark, a mark, and then we have the halfway point, it looks like, mark, 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 then 20. So if I look at that, it's going to be going up by half a milliliter. So 15, 15.5, 16, 16.5, 17, 17.5, 18, 18.5, 19, 19.5, 19 and 20. So this one registers to half a milliliter. So if I look, it was one line above the 15, if you can see that. So what that tells me is that that line above is a half milliliter. So I have accurately and with greater precision 15 and a half milliliters of liquid. Now remember, we had a guess here, and we said it was about 15. It could have been less, could have been a little more, we really didn't know. But with this particular graduated cylinder, because of the extra lines representing more accuracy and more precision, then we can have a more precise measurement. Now, had we had less than 10, remember this one measured to 0.2 milliliters, which is better than 0.5. So this one would have been more precise and even more accurate in my reading of the volume of liquid. So I hope that helps explain that a little bit more about the difference between accuracy and precision. It's kind of like this. If I had a, a watch and I knew it was five minutes fast, that watch is accurate, but the time needs to be adjusted so it's more precise. So if I get in the habit of knowing that my watch runs five minutes fast, then I'm going to probably uh, arrive someplace about five minutes earlier than I need to be there. Lots of people do that because they know that they're going to run late, so they may set their watch ahead so that they know that they're going to have a five-minute flexibility. But if I want my watch to be precise, then I need to back it up by five minutes. And so it's, when it says 12.05 and I know it's really 12, if I go ahead and set my watch to 12 o'clock when it really is 12, then it is precise. So accuracy says it's, it's accurate to a point, but precision says I, I, I need it to be at the right time when it really is that time. So that's how we work with precision and accuracy here. We really want to be both ways. We want to use an accurate type of measurement. And we always use the metric system, of course, in science. And remember, volume is always measured in a liter. Milliliter, centiliter, uh, decaliter, hectoliter. You know, we don't use some of those very often. Liter and milliliter tends to be the more common phrases that we use in science. Now you can get into microliter and things like that when you get into small amounts. And normally we deal with those... Um, when we're dealing with chemistry that deals with medicines, things that are in very small uh, nature, like we're dealing with uh, capsules for medication and stuff like that, we might use some of those types of things uh, if we're using a liquid. But we also can use uh, grams and milligrams and things like that when we're using powdered substances because the gram will actually uh, give you a measurement of the mass of something. Uh, we often get that mixed up a little bit with weight because weight is simply a measurement of gravity. And that would be really for a different video uh, in this video, I really wanted to talk more about accuracy and precision and really focus in on volumes, which is how much space something takes up. So I hope you walk away with this video with a little more knowledge about using graduated cylinders and beakers, the difference between their accuracy and their precision amount. So I hope this helps you guys out. Uh, this is a great review, so I hope you'll revisit it if you're having trouble with these particular topics. Thank you.